Welcome back to Missile and Jet Watch, your trusted channel for everything about missiles, jets, and defense modernization from around the world. Today, we're diving into a hot topic that has been making waves in the Philippine defense community, the potential acquisition of the KF-21 Borome, South Korea's advanced 4.5 generation multi-role fighter jet, for the Philippine Air Force. If this deal ever pushes through, it could be a complete game changer for the country's air power and regional deterrence capability. The KF-21 Borome, which literally means Young Hawk, is South Korea's ambitious fighter jet program developed by Korea Aerospace Industries with heavy support from the South Korean government. This aircraft was designed to be a cost-effective, highly capable alternative to full fifth-generation fighters like the F-35, while still incorporating many of the stealth, avionics, and weapon systems that make modern jets so effective. The KF-21 first flew in 2022 and has since been undergoing extensive flight testing. By the time it enters full production in the mid-2020s, it will be one of the most advanced fighter jets available on the market. For the Philippine Air Force, which is currently operating a fleet of FA-50PH light combat aircraft, the KF-21 represents a massive leap in capability. The FA-50s are excellent trainer light attack jets, but they lack the range, payload, and advanced radar systems of true multi-role fighters. The KF-21, on the other hand, comes with an active electronically scanned array, AESA, radar, advanced electronic warfare systems, and compatibility with a wide range of precision-guided munitions, beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles, and even air-to-ground strike weapons. One of the standout features of the KF-21 is its partial stealth design. While not a full stealth aircraft like the F-35, the Borome incorporates radar cross-section reduction measures, internal weapons carriage for some munitions, and an aerodynamic design that makes it much harder to detect compared to older fourth-generation fighters. This would allow the Philippine Air Force to operate with a higher degree of survivability in contested environments. Cost is also a major factor. The KF-21 is expected to be significantly cheaper than the F-35, both in terms of upfront procurement and long-term maintenance. For a country like the Philippines, which has limited defense budgets but urgent modernization needs, this cost-effectiveness makes the KF-21 an attractive option. South Korea has also proven to be a reliable defense partner, having already delivered the FA-50 fleet on time and supported training, logistics, and maintenance. A potential KF-21 deal would deepen this defense relationship and strengthen military-to-military -military cooperation. Operationally, the KF-21 would allow the Philippine Air Force to truly dominate its airspace. With a top speed of Mach 1.8, advanced targeting pods, and the ability to carry long-range air-to-air missiles like the Meteor, the Borame would give the PAF the ability to engage threats well before they get close. In addition, its air-to-ground capabilities would give the AFP a precision strike option for high-value targets such as enemy missile batteries, radar installations, or naval vessels. Another advantage is interoperability. Because South Korea is closely aligned with the United States and its allies, the KF-21 is being developed with compatibility in mind for Western weapons and systems. This means the Philippines would not be locked into a single supplier for munitions and upgrades, a major plus when flexibility and logistics are critical during a crisis. There's also the future growth potential of the platform. The KF-21 is designed with open architecture avionics, meaning future upgrades can be integrated more easily. South Korea has plans for a Block 2 variant that will feature internal weapons based for full stealth capability, and even a potential unmanned teaming option where the jet could control loyal wingman drones. If the Philippines buys into the KF-21 program early, it could get access to these future upgrades, keeping its air power modern for decades to come. Of course, there are challenges and questions. The biggest one is funding. The Philippine defense budget is limited, and the AFP modernization program already has several competing priorities, including naval assets, ground-based air defense systems, and missile batteries. 
Purchasing a fleet of KF-21s would require a significant allocation of funds and careful planning to ensure that other critical areas do not suffer. Another consideration is training and infrastructure. The KF-21 is a far more complex aircraft than the FAF-50. The Philippine Air Force would need to invest heavily in pilot training, simulator facilities, maintenance hangars, and logistics networks to keep the jets operational. It's not just about buying the planes, it's about building a long-term ecosystem that supports them. Still, the strategic benefits may outweigh the costs. In the face of growing challenges in the West Philippine Sea and the need to defend Philippine airspace against potential incursions, a high-tech multi-role fighter like the KF-21 could be exactly what the country needs. It would give the AFP a credible deterrent, allow it to project power across its entire archipelago, and strengthen alliances with like-minded nations. The KF-21 also sends a message to the world that the Philippines is serious about protecting its sovereignty and is willing to invest in cutting-edge technology to do so. This not only boosts national security but also national pride. Filipinos can look at the Borromeo and know that their Air Force is flying one of the most advanced jets in the region, capable of standing shoulder to shoulder with regional air powers. In the coming years, we will likely hear more discussions about whether the Philippines will join the KF-21 program or choose another fighter like the Gripen or F-16V. Each option has its pros and cons, but one thing is certain, the Philippine Air Force is poised to make a historic leap forward in capability. What do you think? Should the Philippines invest in the KF-21 Borromeo and make it the centerpiece of its future fighter fleet? Or should it go with another option like the F-16V or Gripen? Share your thoughts in the comments, and let's start the discussion. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Missile and Jet Watch for the latest updates on military jets, missile systems, and defense news worldwide.